Review questions for chapter 11. And let's start with 2. Is it possible for an object to have a non-zero acceleration? So your acceleration is non-zero if the object is traveling at a constant speed, constant velocity, sorry, at, or at a constant speed. Okay, so um, first of all, a vector, if you remember, a velocity vector has got two components, magnitude, direction. And when we start looking at circular motion, uh, remember that now, uh, before, remember when we had uh, linear motion, just straight motion, then the way that the velocity changed to give us an acceleration was simply the speed changing, right? So you're traveling at a certain speed and then the speed increases or decreases and that gives you a, an acceleration. Well, when it comes to rotational motion, or rather circular motion, uh, for there to be an acceleration, either the magnitude or the direction uh, can change. So even if you're traveling in a circular, in circular motion at a constant speed, as long as your direction is changing, that means that you have a non-zero acceleration. Okay? So, if either the magnitude or the direction changes, we have a non-zero acceleration. So, uh, if, so, but if the velocity is constant, what that is telling us is that both the magnitude and the direction are constant. If the velocity is constant, then both of these two components are constant okay which means that our acceleration is zero what about b at a constant speed well at if if we're saying that it's a constant speed then all we're saying is that the this magnitude component is constant but we're not saying anything about the direction so your velocity vector can keep changing like this so if the speed is constant then it still means that we can have a non-zero acceleration because the direction could be changing. Number four, for an object in circular motion at constant speed, describe the directions of the object's position vector. So constant speed. What is the, uh, describe the directions of the object's position vector velocity vector and acceleration vector at a given instant. So say now the object is is there. Okay. The position vector is given by that. That's the position vector. The velocity vector is like that. The velocity vector is always tangent to this curve in curved motion. And in, curve, in um, circular motion it is always perpendicular to the position vector and then the acceleration vector is pointed towards the center of the uh, circle okay all right what can we say number seven forces and circular motion what can we say about the vector sum of the forces exerted on an object that moves in a circle at constant speed. Okay? So remember, these guys, if we're looking at circular motion, uh, they have this kind of motion because there is some resultant force. There is some vector sum of forces acting on the object that causes it to have this kind of motion. Okay? So if it's moving at constant speed, uh, what can we say about this vector sum of forces? Well, um, the acceleration, first of all, the sum of the forces is mass times acceleration. This acceleration vector is the same as the force vector. Right? So, 
um, this is number seven. The direction of this uh, vector sum of forces must be the same as the direction of this acceleration which is directed towards the center so there's a sum of the, the the vector sum of forces is directed in the same direction as the acceleration vector okay um, and remember that I'm not sure if you remember but this acceleration uh, vector here always has uh, two potential components the one is uh, a radial component which is directed towards the center of the circle and it has a tangential component tangential component okay so you, you need to pick this up when we're talking about circular motion there's two types of of uh, two components of acceleration we have radial which is given by v squared over r and we've got tangential acceleration which is simply a which is this a t which is dv dt so it, quickly i mean if you've if you've watched all the videos and read through the chapter you should know this but when we're talking about circular motion uh, as i mentioned earlier you can have both the magnitude or the direction changing to give us an acceleration. So this component here refers to the the direction of velocity changing, which gives us a radial component of acceleration. And this component is the magnitude of the velocity changing, which is simply dv dt, right? So... How does the vector sum of forces vary with speed and radius, but for a constant speed? So if the speed is constant, right, if the speed is constant, then we do not have this component because the magnitude of velocity is not changing as we move around, okay? Um, so we just left with this component. So F equals then mv squared over the radius okay I think we've seen this guy before so if the if the um, if the velocity is increased is increased then that means that this um, centripetal force is increased and if the radius is increased then that means that this force is decreased okay hope that makes sense all right, see you in the next one.